Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to have with me for the first time Michael Maloney. Michael is the producer and host of Hidden Secrets of Money. Uh, that's an acclaimed investment education series that explores the history of currency and money, and it aims to enlighten the world that maximum prosperity can only be achieved through the individual freedom of markets, free markets, and sound money. Known for the best-selling Precious Metals Investment Book of All Time, Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver, Mike has become a a persistent leader in helping demystifying what is behind the currency curtain and the historic economic shifts that lead to wealth transfer. Mike has been a featured speaker at investment seminars all over the world. He founded GoldSilver.com in 2005 to establish a trusted online source for ordinary people to buy gold and silver with the knowledge and understanding of how the economics of gold and silver play out over time in a persistent cycle. Welcome, Michael. It's really good to have you with us. Well, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I've looked at your video series, and that's what I want to talk to you about uh, today as much as possible, and I would like to urge our listeners to go to goldsilver.com. To, you can watch this series. It's free, uh, The Hidden Secrets of Money. Uh, it is an excellent series that really gives you a historical perspective and helps you understand where we are right now in the United States relative to what other countries and, and civilizations have gone through in the past, and I, I think it's it's an excellent easy to understand, easy to comprehend way uh, to to really help you understand what you need to do now to protect yourself against what I think is going to be one of the most difficult times in American history facing us as, as we enter uh, over the next couple of years. Well, Michael, uh, the first episode is titled Currency Versus Money. So I would just like to start out by asking you if you can define money uh, and then define currency. Um, well, I'd, I'd like to start with currency. It has okay. to be a it has to be a medium of exchange, mm-hmm. a unit of account. It's got to be portable, durable, divisible, and something called fungible, where mm-hmm. the units are interchangeable. If uh, you loan me a twenty dollar bill, I don't have to pay you back that same twenty dollar bill. I can sure. Pay. Okay. Um, money has to be all of those things plus a store of value. Uh-huh. All national currencies, the way that national currencies are designed, they are specifically designed to lose value. They're backed by debt, which has to be paid back with interest, and in order to pay that interest back, you have to print more of the current and therefore dilute its purchasing power, causing it to lose value. People confuse the currency going down with prices going up. They don't realize that inflation is the currency going down. Uh, And uh, so that's basically the difference between currency and money is money is a store of value over long periods of time. And what's interesting is uh, when you look at this, you know, there have been uh, currencies that store value for a little while, but then they always end up losing value. The only things throughout history that have proven to be money are gold and silver. Okay, we've had, um, I've, I've listened to Alan Greenspan talk about how shells, seashells have been used as money. Um, mm mm-hmm. Various other commodities have been used as money in the past. You don't agree with that? Well, they've been used as, as a currency, but they okay, they're not the store of value. Store value. Uh-huh. Uh, the cowrie shells are the longest uh, used form of currency. There were uh, cultures in Africa that were still using them in the early early 20th century, uh, and so they were they've been around for eight or nine thousand years. Cowrie shells. Mm-hmm. But if you live near an, an ocean, if you're close to the coast, a thunderstorm can break on, bring on a hyperinflation. <laughs> I mean, it can wash up a bazillion shells on the, uh-huh. on the shore and expand uh-huh. the currency supply, and then the, uh, the value goes down. These things worked fairly well uh, way inland, where they were very rare. Um, and you know, the, one of the things about the hidden secrets of money, it's shot in 16 different countries. Hmm. So it has allowed me to tour all of the monetary museums. I I've toured the Bundesbank Museum in uh, Germany, uh, the Monetary Mi- Museum in Beijing, China, the uh, Monetary Museum in Tokyo, Japan, and several others. And the study of currency and money is absolutely fascinating. And how, we, how there are things that parallel what we are doing to our currency today that 
The most fascinating thing about monetary history is that it repeats, and you can sort of predict what is going to happen by whatever is the, the fundamentals of what is going on in the society at the moment. You can sort of see into the future if you know a little bit of monetary history. So it's almost as if it's beyond the control of civilizations. They go through these cycles. Is that it? And I guess if you're able to see it coming, you should be able to avoid the, the pain and even prosper from, uh, from, from this knowledge. And I think that's a big part of what you try to do on your website. Yeah, it's really caused because of civilizations trying to control it. When uh-huh. the free market is allowed to pick what money is and set interest rates, it always, throughout history, without fail, it has always picked gold and silver. And when you have the free market selecting these things, you have stability in an automatic correcting system, where if you have a little bus, there is a correcting system in the free market that causes the bus to go back, you know, to start to boom again. And with with gold, you have these small oscillations around the planet where one society will have a little bit of an economic boom, they feel rich, they start importing goods from societies that have lower labor rates and the mm-hmm. cost of goods is cheaper. When they do that, they export their, they pay in gold. So the mm-hmm. gold is flowing out, causing a deflation and causing the society with the boom going on to cool down and the society with the bust, uh, their economy is very slow to start to boom. And so you have these auto, this automatic self-correcting mechanism with any type of hard money. And it's, it's men uh, having the audacity and arrogance to think that they know better than the free market that cause all the problems, basically. Uh, right. It's, it's economists. <laughs> well, that, that's for sure. Uh, it's, it's the economists uh, yeah, from fancy universities, too, no less.